And welcome back to the St. Clair College Sportsplex in Windsor, Ontario, as WeTV presents OCAA Basketball. That's right. We got another home season, home opener doubleheader for you as the Redeemer Royals and the St. Clair Saints are set to do battle here this afternoon. And hello, everybody. Aaron Sanders with Royal Church Dr. Basketball of the 5-9 area. So glad to have you on board with us for another year of OCAA Basketball here on WeTV. Well, we begin the story with the Redeemer Royals. I mean, yes, they're under a brand new system with a brand new head coach. And a lot of people would say their roster is short, but that doesn't mean that they don't have a lot of talent because as far as we're concerned, there are a couple of players that really catches everybody's eyes, including in the OCAA too. Uh, yeah, Aaron, by the way, welcome back. It's going to be a great season. It's nice to be working with you again here at the uh, Sportsplex. We're going to have a great season, I think. Um, first of all, the new coach is Jesse Van Haldingen, and he's taken over from uh, Rob Hooper, who's moved on. And I was speaking with Jesse earlier, and uh, I mentioned the two players which seem to stand out on his team and have been doing a lot of the scoring. Uh, Julia Pavlik, who wears number 12 for the fans out there in Wii TV land. And uh, she's, been aver she's averaged 20 points in the first two games. And uh, Toby Brinkman wears number 10, and she's averaged 14 points in the first two games. And they'll be the two players that the uh, Redeemer Royals will look for all the time to score. So uh, I'm sure the coaching staff at St. Clair under uh, Andy Kiss are aware of that, and they've made adjustments and are going to be watching those two players closely. They're also aware that Brinkman and Pavlik averaged a double-double in the early stages of this OCAA season. But you mentioned the St. Clair Saints. Let's talk about them. They only played one game, and that was last week where they lost 83-68 to against Sheridan. But there are a lot of positives into that because, again, I haven't seen a shooting display in quite some time when it comes to women's basketball. And one of the players, Anna Olichny, struck it rich. What else should we expect from the Saints team today? Well, I'm sure uh, Coach Kiss and his staff – are looking to get uh, more scoring from the other players. The big three uh, are doing uh, a little over two-thirds of the scoring, which is too much for three players. Other players have to step up. And what they're trying to do, basically, Aaron, is uh, replace Shannon Kennedy's scoring, which is pretty difficult to do. It's big shoes to fill. Absolutely. You can't replace Shannon Kennedy, but some of the other players – who are in their second year, um, uh, like Jamie Chauvin, for example, have to step up and start scoring more points and contributing to the offensive part of the game uh, because St. Clair is going to fall short if they don't. So I'm looking for, and I'm sure, uh, it's early in the season, so uh, not very long from now, I think, hopefully today, some of these other players will step up. Uh, and uh, fill that void left by Shannon. We'll see what goes down here as the Royals and the Saints are about to do battle here live from St. Clair College. We'll have the call. JP and I will be on the call. We'll see Royal back at the halftime show later on. We'll be back for tip-off in just a moment. Windsor started a tradition way back of giving us great barbecue north of the border, and you can taste that tradition when you come to Tommy's Barbecue. Dive into Tommy's rotisserie style ribs and chicken, along with the crinkle cut fries, coleslaw, and the original hot and sweet sauces. Plus all those amazing desserts like black forest cake and strawberry cheesecake. Taste the tradition and so much more at Tommy's Barbecue, 999 Erie Street East. See you there, Windsor. The job market has changed and I have to adapt. I'm not just getting theory, I'm getting skills. <laughs> A degree isn't necessarily a pathway to their career. Being industry ready is. I choose to take control of my future, and my path is St. Clair College. I choose to be here. Hi, everybody. This is Tina Brigley, host of In and Out of Your Mind with Tina Brigley on WeTV. Join me and my guests while we explore ways to get out of your mind and into your life. Join us each and every week for a new show. Come see me here on WeTV. 
Did you know that the most severe injuries in our region are motor vehicle crashes? 65% of road fatalities last year were directly the result of distracted driving. 90% of injuries arriving in our emergency rooms are preventable. Our message to you this summer is put down the phone, just drive. Let's work together to keep our trauma stretchers empty. I learn by doing. I learn by um, reacting to a situation. St. Clair puts me directly into my industry. I'm dealing with real patients, real life situations. It's not just theory. It's not book work anymore. I choose to take control of my future and my path to St. Clair College. I choose to be here. Hi, I'm Josie, and I'm your co-host of the We Digital production, We Now. Anyone interested in promoting a business, an event, a book signing, or maybe even just making aware of the movers and shakers of Windsor Essex County, We Now can do that for you. We'll get your word out. So make sure you email me at josie at we-tv.ca to book an in-studio session that will air live on Facebook. And don't forget to check out our social media. We've got Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and YouTube. We are resilient, often knocked down, but never backing down. You can spend your whole life on the outside looking in, or you can live it on the inside. Because that's where your passion lives. The drive to push beyond the naysayers, to find the fire that ignites your toughness. Because the truth is, winning always comes when you start from within. for OCAA Women's Basketball in the home opener for the St. Clair Saints as they take on the Redeemer Royals at the St. Clair College Sportsplex in Windsor, Ontario. Good evening, I'm Justin Prince alongside Aaron Sanders for what should be a great matchup. As you see the Redeemer Royals get ready to go for tonight's matchup. Let's look at their starters for today's game. Michaela Blackburn will start alongside Toby Brinkman along with Larissa Bowman. Julia Pavlik. Transferring from the OUA will make the start today along with Katrina Martin. And the first year head coach will lead them in Jesse Van Hellingen. As you see now, the Saints are getting ready to go. They're coming into today with their second game of the season. Let's look at their starters coming into the 2018-19 home opener for the St. Clair Saints. Anna Olichny will start alongside Logan Kucera along with Haley Bull. Also making the start. The four guard set will be Yana Kucera, along with the forward, Kirsten Zolina. So a big time lineup coming into today, led by head coach Andy Kiss, who's wearing pink for a great cause, Aaron. Well, that's right, JP. Hope everybody's ready for a 2018-2019 season, but she, he's wearing red because the whole St. Clair Saints organization, they are under a new thing called Saints Fight Cancer. They are fighting cancer, and they're doing this to support the pediatric oncology program. And for the way I see it, they are selling these awesome pink bags that has Saints Fight Cancer right there. And they're going to be sold from the 15th to Wednesday, and you could get them for $5 or a donation. So as long as you're able to donate, you are supporting a great cause. And this is a great cause indeed for this college, JP. The bags are being sold until October 31st for $5 or a donation. Your officials for today, Barry Cohen, Don Coatsworth, and Doug Heath as we're about to get going for the opening tip-off for the home schedule for the St. Clair Saints for women's basketball. We're underway at the Sportsplex. Saints have the first possession passed out to Cacera on the outside perimeter between the Caceras. Finding Logan Cacera back to Ulichny. Swan around once again to Furl. Back to Yana Cacera. Cacera loses the ball at strength. Redeemer has the steal within the first 20 seconds. Bringing up the floor, trying to set things up the Redeemer Royals. This shot misses, tapped out of bounds. Tap forward, rather, as it's rebounded by the Saints. Brought up by the floor by Cusera. Passed outside to Yana Cusera. Cusera for three. It's good. 
And I can see them. They're catching up to their motif last season, J last week, JP, when it came down to the three-pointers. And Janet Cusera was able to knock down that three because she had so much space. Saints are up on the board. Meanwhile, passing inside, going for the bucket inside to Toby Brinkman. No good. 3-0 Saints within the first minute of play is driving inside. Draws the whistle. And that will be two free throws coming up for Logan Cusera. And for the Saints, they come into today in just their second game of the season, coming off an 86-63 loss, as you see the play up on your screen to draw that foul, Aaron. Once again, Logan Cicera driving down to the lane. She knew three defenders are right there, so she took charge, she drew the contact, and now she's off to the line. For Cicera coming into today, last year averaged 12.6 points per game as the second free throw misses. Yelena Kuzera passed outside, dribbling. Yelichny, shot, goes off the front of the rim. Rebounded by the Royals. Stripped away again, this time Logan Kuzera. Trying to pass it outside, deflected a bound. Possession will stay to the Saints. You can see here, based on this lineup, JP, we got four returning players in addition to the rookie Haley mm -hmm. Fur, and there's a lot that she has accomplished in the last few years. We'll get to that later on. Mm -hmm. But once again, I'm liking the look of this Saint, their Saints Waterloo. squad so far. Up for nothing. Yana Kusera dribbles, dribbles it around the perimeter. Yelichny nearly deflected around, stolen away by the Royals. Bring it up the floor this time will be Pavlik. Pastel Blackburn going to the low post. Brinkman avoids the double team. Now Pavlik tries to pass inside. Dodging for the ball, possession Saints. You know what, there's one thing to mention, JP. The Royals, a lot of people will say they have a short roster with eight players, but you know what, that doesn't mean that their effort lacks right there because you've seen right there that good indoor pass and the hustle to try to get the ball away. It didn't go in their favor, but once again, there's a main reason why these ladies keep on getting back into the game. The Redeemer Royals so far 0-2 on the season, including an overtime loss as the three is missed on the outside by Yelichny. Here comes Redeemer. Up the floor, Pavlik leading the charge, inside, going for the layup, it's good. Nice pass down low to Toby Brinkman. They finally got that high-low pass working, and Brinkman was at the other end scoring two points for them. Already one substitution waiting on the sidelines for the Saints as they try and pass it outside for three. Logan Kuchera misses. Tapped out of bounds, Redeemer ball. And that brings in the first substitution of the day. Kirsten Tompkins will come, the first-year player from Sarnia will come in. This will be her OCAA debut, JP, considering she did not play last week. So, again, we're seeing a plethora of guards on this lineup right now. For St. Clair, they lost 86-63 to to Sheridan to start off their season. As the bucket is good, Redeemer ties it up at four. Toby Brinkman once again, so it's Toby Brinkman four, the Saints four right now. And a pretty strong start for Brinkman so far today. Driving inside, Yana Kuchera draws the whistle. She'll go to the line to shoot two. And the foul is going to go against Brinkman. And let's look at the replay to see what draw the foul there. Well, Brinkman was camping right, right out inside, and Lichney, as you see, her up top. Switches it right down, gets the pick from Zelina, and she just took matters in her own hands and went right inside the paint. And first free throw is good to make it 5-4. to four. Average 11.5 points per game, 4.8 rebounds, and shot 58.5% during last season. As the second free throw makes it 6-4. to four. Jamie Shobin's going to check in now, JP. Last year, last week, she started with four points, three rebounds, and an assist to steal to mm -hmm. her name. Last season, she averaged six points and 1.7 rebounds yep. a game. And as you can see, they're going to, so looks like they're going to set up for the man-to-man -man coverage press. The Saints will for this inbound. Inbound at that time for the play to Pavlik. As that goes out of bounds, turnover for Pavlik. Well, it paid off for them because they had so much coverage on them. One of the main reasons why Andy Kiss decided to go for the man-to-man -man full court pressure. And that's one of the things that he said that needs to be improved on by the Saints coming into the day after the game against Sheridan. As there's the three on the outside perimeter, no good, rebounded inside. Redeemer brings it up the floor. Pavlik keeps the pressure up. Finds Brinkman down low towards the post. Martin. Martin gets the miss. 
Tries to put up a second shot, rebound inside. Tompkins spins, draws the whistle. And that'll be a foul, it looks like, against Redeemer. Too much muscle from Redeemer's side trying to get the ball, JP. But again, mm -hmm. that is a bad spot to tuggle up right there near the, near the baseline because you know it could either go either as a foul or you're going to lose the possession. In this case, the Saints took advantage of that situation and now they have the ball. Yolichny by Gianna Kujera. Kujera drives inside off the back of the rim. Rebound inside, inside by Bowman. Pavlik leads the offense outside Blackburn. Low post once again to Brinkman. Passed outside. For the triple, Martin, no good, rebounded by Blackburn. Stripped away on the offensive board. Here comes St. Clair. They'll slow down the tempo on the outside. Chauvin, stripped away. Another turnover in the early going for St. Clair. Just four minutes in, as there's a whistle drawn. Foul against St. Clair. I'll give credit to Kirsten Tompkins for having her hands active, and that's what you got to do when you're on defense, especially when you're down low. You got to take care of business, and she did that. A little too much aggression, mm -hmm. uh, aggression on her side, but rest assured, that was a good foul. And their player now in for Redeemer substitution for them, Alex Webb, the first-year player from Water Down, Ontario. And she'll set up the play here on the outside. Brinkman moves to the low post outside. Blackburn. Now Pavlik back to Brinkman. Five on the shot clock. Tries to cut in, stripped away. Good hands St. by Logan. St. Clair now on the fast break. Slowing it down, Yannick Kuchera. Now Tompkins tries to pass it back outside. Got it in, Logan Kuchera. Nice. Finds the player down on the low shot. Mid-range, no good. Fight for the board inside, picked up by Redeemer. Pavlik will push the tempo. Blackburn now slows it back down. Cutting in Martin. Martin draws the whistle. And it looks like it might be a blocking foul in this play. Now going to the line to shoot two. Well, we're going to look at this again, JP. Quick cross-court pass right over the Blackburn. And a quick drive, good crossover right there. And unfortunately for Logan Kashera, she was at the wrong place at the wrong time. And makes the first free throw to make it six to five just about halfway through the first quarter. As the second free throw goes up and is no good. Rebounded by St. Clair. Tompkins will lead it up the offense once again. Now outside, Yannick Kuchera puts up the shot on the perimeter, no good off the back rim. Rebounded by Martin. Still trying to fight through as he finally gets it off to Webb. Webb guarded by Logan Kuchera. Finds Blackburn. Now out to Pavlik. Going around the perimeter. Now to the low post, Brinkman. Brinkman down on her knees. Finds Pavlik for the shot. Misses on the triple. Here comes the pressure. Logan Kuchera finds Yana Kuchera. Yana tries to pass it down low to Tompkins. Ball out of bounds, turnover. A little a little too much generous on St. Clair's side, JP, and that's what we saw when they played against Sheridan last week. They were being too generous to swing around the ball, and now we're getting to see Noor Bazzi in, in her home debut. Noor Bazzi brought into the game, guarding on the press, wearing number 14 for the Saints and drawing the foul. Now Noor Bazzi, first year player from Windsor, taking pre-health signs at St. Clair, and had no, been a noteworthy player with the Windsor Valiance Jewel teams, had seven points, a rebound assist, and a block in three minutes in the first game for the Saints. Absolutely, and Nora Bazzi, a lot of people got to know about her, especially in her <laughs> high school play, too, after playing for Massey. She averaged 15 points per game. In addition to that, <laughs> she was a three-time MVP and won the high school All-Star Game MVP as well, shot by Webb. Webb gets the shot to go, gives Redeemer the first lead for their day so far, with about four minutes to go in the first quarter. Saints trying to out it back on as it's stripped away, Brinkman. Pavlik will lead it up and slow the pace back down. Picks being set, finding Webb. Handed off now to Martin. Martin draws the whistle, she'll go to the line to shoot two for the Redeemer. Well, the defense is there for the Saints, but once again, when you look on the offensive side, they are not putting in good shots at all. They're too much shots from long range, and nobody's ready to get the box out rebound. 
And already the Saints are trying to match them with substitutions. Marissa Mara is now coming in, the second year player from Sarnia. But now, to mention it with Redeemer in their two games so far, 58% from the free throw line, 12th. Even though it's a small sample size, not a strong time of the line as the first one's missed. Yeah, not a good performance right there, especially when it comes to clutch situations, JP. They usually rely on either one or two points, and you could easily get them from the line, so they got to tighten down on that, which is one of the keys of the game that Jesse Van Halingen mentioned at the beginning of the game. Made the second free throw to make it a two-point game for the Royals. Approaching three minutes to go in the first quarter. Pass to the outside, Logan Kushera tries to pass it to the perimeter and draws the whistle. That'll be him down, bounded down the baseline. Once again, this is what the this is what the Caceres do best. They drive right down and they'll absorb pretty much any contact and they find an open look like they did right there with Jamie Chauvin before the whistle. They'll take care of business. Michaela Blackburn was the one who drew the foul as the triple outside just rims out. Rebounded by Blackburn. Blackburn stops at half court. Passed up. Martin down low Brinkman to Pavlik. Pavlik gets the screen from Brinkman. Now back to Brinkman in the low post. Six on the shot clock. Stolen away. This time, Yulichny. Yulichny finds Mara. Now Tabazi to the mid range. Logan Kushera outside. Perimeter for three. It's good. They're going to count that as a long two, JP, but you got to like the ball rotation on that play. It all started with Marissa Mara retaining the ball after a risky pass. Quick steal. And once again, after the two points, Jamie Ch Chauvin able to get the steal, but drawing the whistle up the floor, Redeemer. Tied up at eight apiece, as you'll see the whistle, the play starting off here. Yeah, Redeemer's kicking themselves from the previous play, too. So a quick triangle pass to Jamie Chauvin for that long two, and it worked out for them. That's the fifth foul of the first quarter for Redeemer. That sends the Saints to the line to shoot two. And that's going to put them in the bonus for the rest of the quarter. And Chauvin makes the first of two. Last year, 60% from the stripe. Last game, four points, three rebounds for the second-year player from Wallaceburg. And both are good. And that gives the Saints a 10 to 8 lead substitution as Kirsten Zolina will come back into the game. Well, when it comes to scoring, JP, this is what uh, Royal and I talked about at the beginning of the game. Somebody else got to step up besides the big three for the Saints, and they're doing it right now despite the low score. Brinkman, meanwhile, down the floor, gets the play to go down to the low post. Tied back up at 10. It was all based on position down low, JP, and she was able to get that extra room to knock it down. Brinkman now with four points in the first quarter. Yulichny, pass down low, Mara. And that play goes out of bounds, stays Saints possession. We've seen the minor wheel play established right down on the post. That's one of the reasons why Mara got open, JP. So now they got to think of something right down to the baseline, get a quick shot off. Zelina, seven on the shot clock. Bossy gives it now, Yulichny. Misses the play on the outside. Fight for the rebound. Martin tries to keep it away from the strips. Goes now up the floor. Brings the pace. Goes for the layup off the back of the rim. Tapped out of bounds. Redeemer possession still. And to get to the point when it comes to the Saints, one of the things they were looking to improve on was not going as much outside, going much more inside, with, especially with Redeemer going inside a majority of their plays like this one, no good. Well, you're right there, JP. Once again, those long-range shots is just going to hurt them, especially in the field goal department. Nor Bazzi, too. And Bazzi misses the jump shot. Stripped away after the rebound. Saints possession under two minutes to go in the first quarter. For three outside. She's got it. Mara with the bucket. Makes it 13 to 10. Well, they finally got a long-range jumper down, but that doesn't excuse them for getting those long-range shots off. Almost a steal there. And Blackburn just keeps it in to be able to keep the possession alive for the Royals. Back down low again, Brinkman oh. misses the shot. Second chance, it's good. Brinkman how has six. That's one of the reasons why she averages 14 points per game, JP. She doesn't give up. Second chance opportunities comes a knock and she'll take that ball. And add in to the 12.5 rebounds in the two games so far as the shot, mid-range no good. Fight for the rebound, three players topple down. Jump ball. And the possession arrow looks like going towards Redeemer. 
Now we've seen there, JP, the Saints were at a little bit of a disadvantage right inside with the guards right down there. The forwards way off from the help side, so it was up to Mara to try to fight that ball around and get the possession arrow. And Lucy Brinkman is now into the game now for Redeemer. As they will set up for the inbound along the side. This will be Webb inbounding to Pavlik. Pavlik between two defenders. Bounces around to Pavlik. Tries to pass it. Intercepted by Bossy. Oh. Here comes the Saints. Leading the charge for the lamp inside. It's good on transition by Yana Kuchera. Andy Kiss got to be happy with that. Nor Bazzi with the spin around pass. Calling for the press is Kiss. Wind the steal. Redeemer knocked around. Whistle called. And that's going to be a foul called on the floor. And you've seen the press there. And that play started off by good transition defense. Nor Bazzi to Ulichny finishing it off with Jana Kusera. Wide open range. This was one thing they needed to work on the transition game. And uh, mm -hmm. that was a pretty nifty play, if I say so myself. And now Redeemer is in the bonus for the rest of the first quarter. Under a minute to go in this quarter as the second free throw up and good. And drained by Webb. Came into today 75% from the strike. Saints trying to keep a two-point lead. Logan Kuchera drives in. She's got the bucket. Did you just see her go through like elevator doors? She found the weakness and just splits them in half, gets the bucket to go. Here's the press again. Blackburn able to get to the half-court set. Webb will set up at the top. One second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Under 15 seconds to go in the first. Stripped away. Anna Ulichny will bring it up the floor for the layup. She's got it. Under five seconds to go, 19 to 13. Can Redeemer get a last second shot? Blackburn, half court, no good. And the St. Clair St Saints have a strong run to end off the first quarter and lead 19 to 13. Look at that quick replay right there again. And Ulichny with the active hands. The defense is coming alive for St. Clair, but they got another 10 minutes to go in the first half to deal with because Redeemer's not going away, not by a long shot. And that ends off the first quarter here in OCAA coverage of Saints basketball. We'll be back right after this. 19-13 is your score. Windsor started a tradition way back of giving us great barbecue north of the border. And you can taste that tradition when you come to Tommy's Barbecue. Dive into Tommy's rotisserie style ribs and chicken, along with the crinkle cut fries, coleslaw, and the original hot and sweet sauces. Plus all those amazing desserts like black forest cake and strawberry cheesecake. Taste the tradition and so much more at Tommy's Barbecue, 999 Erie Street East. See you there, Windsor. The job market has changed and I have to adapt. I'm not just getting theory, I'm getting skills. <laughs> A degree isn't necessarily a pathway to their career. Being industry ready is. I choose to take control of my future, and my path is St. Clair College. I choose to be here. Hi, everybody. This is Tina Brigley, host of In and Out of Your Mind with Tina Brigley on WeTV. Join me and my guests while we explore ways to get out of your mind and into your life. Join us each and every week for a new show. Come see me here on WeTV. Welcome back everyone to the St. Clair College Sportsplex here in Windsor, Ontario. You're looking at Shannon Kennedy, who is a story player for this St. Clair Saints women's basketball program finished her final season last year in the OCAA era. An historic player in the five years of covering the St. Clair Saints, you cannot mention anybody else more than Shannon Kennedy. She's the leading scorer in OCAA women's basketball history. She broke that last season, which was a phenomenal effort. She spent four or five years making sure this team was able to stay in position, made the playoffs almost each and every year, and you know what? It goes to show, when it comes to the Kennedy family, they got well-value athletes, and you best believe Shannon is one of them. So good to see the Saints faithful, the alumni, back to see all these teams out here at the Sportsplex today. Second quarter underway here at the St. Croix College Sportsplex. Saints lead 19-13 to as the jump shot's no good from the outside air ball. 
two of the top scorers so far after the first quarter. Yana Kushera with seven as well. A dominant pressure pr presence rather by Toby Brinkman in the low post as there's the press out of bounds. As that's going to be a turnover out of bounds there was Logan Kushera after the steal. Back to Toby Brinkman, JP. Nobody has been able to stop Brinkman because she's been in the receiving end of the passes. Nobody's capitalizing on the second chance opportunities. Those are the situations where you really got to lock down down low, especially with Toby Brinkman. She has so much space, so much position right down there, and nobody has picked up the hint. So they really got to pick it up on the interior defense. Of course, Toby Brinkman leads to Lucy Brinkman, and a third Brinkman is expected for next year for the 2019-20 season. A family of six girls from the Brinkmans from the Ottawa, Ontario region. As right now, Redeemer tries to get their first points of the quarter. On the outside, Blackburn, seven on the shot clock, down low. Finding Lucy Brinkman, no good. Here comes the Saints. Yana Cuchero lead up the charge. Finds Logan Cuchero, mid-range jump shot's good. That brings the lead to eight. It was a much better effort on that shot than the one we just saw earlier. And almost going away, the press. Tapped out of bounds by Bazzi. Redeemer possession still. We're seeing Bazzi getting a little bit more time than last week, JP, when she only had three minutes. But in that time, she, have, she got seven points from that. Mm -hmm. And immediately, she's applying the pressure. And she still is. Yeah, you can see their play setting up for the mid-range jump shot. Meanwhile, Redeemer trying to set up a three-point shot. No good from Blackburn. Up the floor comes Tompkins. Gives it off to Yana Kuchera. Kuchera. Has Bazzi in the corner. That's going to be a two, just too long. Rebounded though by Tompkins. Goes to the corner, gets the bucket. So again, another long two, but Kirsten Tompkins and all the other Saints guards are really getting the good look so far. And now Kiss trying to call for more pressure into the half court set. Blackburn, down low, Lucy Brinkman gets it to go. Able to shed off the defender. Once again, Lucy Brinkman taking care of the mismatch. Just left Tompkins in her dust, spun around, got the bucket. Now setting up Tompkins. Pulls up for the jump shot outside, bounces in. And that's going to be a triple, 26 to 15 Saints. Talk about a redemption opportunity for Tompkins after being left high and dry in the defensive end. And a whistle called as it looks like a foul called against St. Clair from the press. Substitution coming onto the floor. Kirsten Zolina will come back into the game. So it'll be inbounded from the side this time by Alex Webb. Coming out of the game now as well, Lucy Brinkman for Redeemer. That allows coming back into the game, Toby Brinkman. As now, stolen away on the floor, scramble around. And they say it's Redeemer possession. 26 to 15, still 7.46 to go in the first half. Justin Prince alongside Aaron Sanders here for the home opener of women's basketball for the St. Clair Saints for the 2018-19 season. Right now, Webb pulls up for the mid-range. Too long. Here comes the charge by Yana Kuchera. Double teamed, able to pass it out. Tompkins calls it for it to slow down. Logan Kuchera cuts inside. Tries to pass it away. Deflected away, stolen. Brought up the floor by Alyssa Ziltney. Webb takes it in herself, draws the whistle. She'll go to the line to shoot two. This is the second foul of the first quarter for the Saints. Alex Webb so far three points. She's going to try to get her fourth and fifth point to equal her stats from last week. And we're going to look at this play again. And you can see the ball got stuck between two different defenders which led to the foul being called there, as that one's no good on the first free throw. That's the problem right there. Most players, when they drive, they usually put it in their bread basket right near the stomach area, so the defense could just put the hands on there and try to strip it away. But the problem is, when you're down low, you've got fouls. 0 for 2 at the line this time is Webb. As now the ball falls out of the hands of Yana Kuchera, as that's going to mean substitutions now. Haley Furr coming back into the game now for the Saints. And when it comes to the Saints team, talk with Andy Kiss a little bit about this. This is a team that will play at times up to five guards as the press is continuing on on the floor. Redeemer tries to set up down low. Blackburn, back outside Brinkman. Back to Blackburn. 
Still around the perimeter, finding once again down low. Brinkman, she gets it to go again. That's double digit points now for Brinkman. Brinkman's just unconscious down low, and the Saints, they could do all they can to get a hand up, but you can't outwit what she's been doing so far. Pass outside, Yowichny goes out towards the fans as that'll be a turnover for the Saints. So a nine point lead for St. Clair with 6.36 to go in the second. As a timeout is called on the floor by the St. Clair Saints, Andy Kiss wanting to discuss the turnovers that he's been seeing in the past few possessions. Well, I don't see why not, because on the offensive end, there are so many chances where they could get wide open looks. They've been getting that, but the problem is they're looking too far down low into it. Defensively, they gotta find they gotta find an answer for Toby Brinkman. Yeah, right now Brinkman, 10 total points for Redeemer so far. And this was one of the main things with the game with Sheridan. You look at the coaching staff. This is one of the storylines with Redeemer. This head coach, as you see here, played in the 2000s, the early 2000s, Jesse Van Howlinen, hired in late August, had late prep for this team, had just six players able to suit up for the preseason, and an eight, a bent total of eight players on the roster for the 2018-19 season at this point. Well, absolutely. I mean, when you have short time to set up like that, you know, a lot of people would say, well, maybe you're under the pressure or anything, but to credit Coach Jesse, he's doing a real good job with his team. As you look at both mm -hmm. benches right now, yeah. Andy Kiss corralling mm -hmm. his team, Jesse Van Hallingen, yeah. basically telling them, it's like, look, keep on sending it down low because it's been working out so far. When they have that guard start mm -hmm. starting, then that's going to be a mismatch that they could take advantage of. Some very happy fans here at the St. Croix College Sportsplex. 26-17, your score with 6.36 to go in the first half. As the Saints have a strong game for the most part. Kiss already making adjustments on the defensive press. Now Webb will pass it along. Trying to spread it around. Up the floor this time will be Webb. Hands it off to Pavlik. Now to Blackburn. 10 on the shot clock. Finds Brinkman on the high post. Drives inside, misses the bucket. Saints will bring it up the floor as Mara passes it down to Fur. Back out on Mara towards the side. Yolichny, it's good for three. 29 to 17. That was a beautiful setup, and it was all because Haley Furd found the open man. Another good bucket for the Saints on the perimeter as now the press continues to shed things aloud. Pavlik, no good, rebounded inside. Cusera. Saints will bring up the pressure for the jump shot off the back rim, rebounded inside. Zelina finds the back door to Fur, bobbles the ball. Diving on his look, and Cusera can't keep the possession as Pavlik will slow down the offense for the Redeemer Low Royals. Approaching halfway to go in the second quarter. Able to find it down low, Brinkman. Outside Pavlik, Pavlik cuts in, draws the whistle. She'll go to the line to shoot two. You know what, I'm a little bit happy to see Julia Pavlik getting more time than necessary because in the last four years as a part of the University of Waterloo Warriors, she's a transfer, folks, mind you. Mm -hmm. She played in the OUA and uh, she did not fare well and did not get enough minutes, averaging four points and three rebounds a game. But if you look at how she's doing in the past two years, she's averaging, I mean the past two games rather, she's averaging a double-double and this is one of the reasons why. And when it comes to Van Howlingen, one of the things he mentioned with Pavlik, he expected her to be able to run the high pace in the OCAA for the offense, but not the rebound production that they've had so far. She missed the second free throw. Saints right now trying to keep this a double-digit gap. Misses on the back rim. Second chance outside for her. They'll reset nine seconds on the shot clock. Yelichny outside, just rims out. Second chance, Selena no good. Rebounded by Pavlik. And Pavlik coming into tonight averaging 12.5 rebounds, will pass it outside. Finds Blackburn to Brinkman. Brinkman, outside, shot. Air ball no good from Pavlik. Saints will try and move it up the floor, keeping the high tempo. Spin move. Out towards the mid-range. No good. Rebounded by Pavlik on the deflection. Under five minutes to go in the second quarter. Stolen away by the Saints by the press. Nearly stripped away from Logan Cursera. Kept alive. Yulichny stretches it out outside for three. No good from Mara. Mara keeps it alive as it's passed outside to Haley Fur. Just kept in the half court. 
Down to six on the shot clock. Outside, foot of the line, no good. Rebounded by Redeemer, but a whistle called under the basket. How about that drive and the pressure? And we a got a man is, down. And a player is down. That is Michaela Blackburn, the fourth year eligible player from Oshawa, Ontario. Well, that doesn't look good, JP. When it comes to the hustle, it comes a sacrifice, too. Hopefully, that she's all right. She came into today at six and assist in seventh and minutes. You can see the trigger of the play. Yeah, yeah, it looked like she popped something in her leg region. Yeah, she's calling for it as the ball is still up in the air and now going right to the bench. Next game graphic. The next game right after this one will be the men's basketball home opener for the St. Clair Saints against the Redeemer Royals, as that one will also be a very interesting matchup. Saints will also try and get their first victory of the 2018-19 season here on Wii TV. Back in play with under four minutes to go in the second quarter. 11-point lead for the Saints over the Royals. Back inside, Brinkman. Misses the layup inside. Rebounded on the inside by the new substitution, Raven Williams. Yana Kushera. Kiss telling them to lift up on the play. Stopping in the mid-range. Outside, Yana Kushera with nine. Steps back. Oh, oh my. She's got it. Yana Kushera makes it. Now a 32-18 lead. And a very strong offensive game so far from the Saints. Redeemer trying to match that up. Yana Kushera almost breaks that up to Brinkman. Outside. Back around to Brinkman. Pulls up for the three. Misses the three. Rebounded. Here comes Logan Kushera. Kushera pulls up for the mid-range in transition. No good. Pablo gets the rebound. Under three minutes to go in the first half. Passed along. Martin to the corner. Able to find Bowman. Back down low to Brinkman. Brinkman spinning the post. Up the front rim. Rebound down low by Redeemer. Gets the second chance points to go. It was all because Raven Williams, she had her back turn on the defensive end, expecting the Saints to go on the full transition. So once again, you got to keep your eye on the ball and stay in position. Jamie Chauvin is currently waiting along the sidelines to come in for St. Clair. And she will come in, in fact, here. Timeout, in fact, called by Redeemer on the floor with just above two minutes to go in the second quarter in a 12-point ball game, Aaron. You know, the one thing I like about the Saints so far is their second chance opportunities because that lacked last week in their game against Sheridan. They were outnumbered and they were mismatched because of that. But now, when you have Michaela Blackburn out of the game, you could take more advantage of the defense. And now you can see them popping right out from the post, boxing out, getting the second chance opportunities. I haven't seen a player, especially to uh, Kirsten Zelina, being the majority of the rebounds right there. So they're branching out, they're swinging the ball around, and they're getting those good shots. And right now, if you're a redeemer, where you're mainly all your offense is coming from one player and your main option is Toby Brinkman, what do you do to try and Justin, if you're St. Clair, how do you counter for those set possible adjustments? You're going to have to double team. If they branch out to the side, you got to have one player ready. It's good to double team down low in the post, but when it comes to swinging, you got to make sure you respond immediately. They got to pick up the pace defensively if they want to shut her down. 32 20 is the score with 2.18 to go in the second. As you see the timeout finishing up after the discussions from Andy Kiss, who's been making a lot of substitutions and a lot of fans have come out for today's action. The basketball home openers for the women's and men's programs here in Windsor. Well, I'm impressed with the crowd that we have here to today, JP, and the crowd we had yesterday for volleyball. So again, the community coming out and supporting the green and gold. Meanwhile, 2.10 to go, down low. In the post, able to get it to go, Katrina Martin. And Katrina Martin, with her first two points of the day, makes it a 10-point ball game. Saints on the outside. Pace in space, jump shot mid-range, no good. Rebounder on the inside once again, this time by Bowman. Pavlik will find Brinkman. Brinkman, double team, spins around, misses the shot. Good defense from Williams. Already another adjustment possibly coming up here. Logan Cusera now waits on the side for the Saints. Rebound on the second chance now for St. Clair. 
under 90 seconds to go in the second. Jump shot, it's good. Again, the second chance opportunities prosper here, JP. Yeah, multiple second chance opportunities from St. Clair so far today. As Pavlik stops in the mid range, passed outside. Bowman, now inside Martin. She gets it to go. She's got four. And Martin starting against the offense now for Redeemer. Under a minute to go now in the second. Few players falling over on the left side of the perimeter for the Saints. Yana Kushera. Two Look more out. players tangled around. Still no calls and whistles with five on the shot clock. Now we have a whistle. And it looks like on the rebound, this will be down the baseline. 41.7 seconds to go in the second. Too much action outside. Andy Kiss wanted a foul there, and I could see why. Both players getting knocked out, and he even said, even before to one of the refs, that there's too much aggression right there. They're tugging, they're pulling. I mean, I credit Redeemer for the hustle and everything, but they got to make sure they don't get it out of hand. Marissa Morrow was the one getting the explanation now forwarding it to her head coach in Kiss as she goes off to the bench. Couple substitutions, Bazzi now back into the game. We also mentioned along the side was Chauvin. Meanwhile, press broken away by the Royals. Outside for three, no good. It's an error ball, goes out of bounds. It'll be Saints possession. That was a whiffer right there, JP. Bad shot at the wrong time. For Martin, 18.5% from the field coming into today. Six total points on the night. Mm -hmm. 24 seconds to go in the first half. Five second difference between shot clock and game clock as the triple is good. Yana Kushera from the outside. 37 to 24. Redeemer trapping them around. Bozzi taps it out of bounds. Redeemer still possession. Good defensive effort right there by Bazzi. It's those cross-court passes that make or break you, JP. When you have a well-good defender like her on your side, that's going to create fits on the other side. We got, we got a timeout. Timeout called by Redeemer. That's their second of the first half with a 13-point deficit and a few seconds to go. What do you think they're drawing up here with about 10 seconds left in the second? Well, first off, if you're Redeemer, you got to find some way, of course, to get the ball but It's Saints ball, right? Saints correct. Saints possession. Mm -hmm. Okay, the way I see it for the Saints, mm -hmm. draw up a play for Nor Bazzi. Reward her, because you've seen right there. Good defensive hustle right there. Mm -hmm. And you can see right now, you can see Kiss starting to plan things with his game plan. What do you think he is planning out here and discussing with his team? He's just making sure that if they do get the ball, they swing it with close passes. If they're back on the defensive end, Man-to-man -man pressure. And of course, during halftime, Royal Church will join Aaron Sanders for our halftime coverage here on Wii TV in a 37-24 ball game. Saints currently up in their home opener looking for their first win of the 2018-19 campaign in the final seconds of this quarter, the second quarter in the first half. Timeouts finished up, 5.7 seconds to go in the first half as it'll be inbounded down the side. It'll be inbounded by the Saints as they'll have just about six seconds to get something to go. An all-guard lineup. Yana Kushera avoiding reach-ins. Dodges around, the shot <laughs> off the rim, no good. 37-24 is your score at halftime as the Saints lead by 13 and their home opener in OCAA women's basketball action here on Wii TV. Don't go anywhere, we'll be back in just a moment. You're watching Wii TV from the St. Croix College Sportsplex in Windsor, Ontario. Windsor started a tradition way back of giving us great barbecue north of the border, and you can taste that tradition when you come to Tommy's Barbecue. Dive into Tommy's rotisserie style ribs and chicken, along with the crinkle cut fries, coleslaw, and the original hot and sweet sauces. Plus all those amazing desserts like black forest cake and strawberry cheesecake, Taste the tradition and so much more at Tommy's Barbecue, 999 Erie Street East. See you there, Windsor. The job market has changed and I have to adapt. I'm not just getting theory, I'm getting skills. 
A degree isn't necessarily a pathway to their career. Being industry ready is. I choose to take control of my future, and my path is St. Clair College. I choose to be here. All right, welcome back here to the Sportsplex to score the Saints 37, the Redeemer Royals 24. I'm joined by one of the assistant coaches for the Redeemer Royals right now, Patrick Ivoroni. And uh, Patrick, your thoughts on the first half? Uh, I think we played well. We're executing the way we wanted to. If we just limit our turnovers, then I think we'll do a lot better. How about Toby Brinkman getting those shots right inside? Was that part of the game plan? Toby's always a big part of our game plan. And she's one of those players that are very hard to stop. So we need to keep her going, and I think we'll be successful that way. Kayla Blackburn went down early on in the second quarter. How are you willing to fill in that void? Uh, we're lucky that it's nothing too serious, so we're hoping that we're going to be able to get her in, into the second half and use her. All, right. All the best to you, Patrick. Thank, Thank you, you for your time. Much. We're going to bring in, we're going to bring in Amanda Milanis right now, one of the new assistant coaches for the St. Clair Saints right now, and here she is right now. <laughs> Amanda Milanis joining me right now, and your thoughts on the first half. I thought we played a very good first half. We just have to limit our turnovers a little bit, but our transition offense is really good, and we're getting a lot of baskets off of that, and just we just have to keep making shots for the second half to come. As part of the coaching squad, you got to admire the second chance efforts because there was some of that lacking last week. So your thoughts on the second chance effort? For Mara? From, yeah, from everybody. Oh, from everyone? Um, like coming back off the weekend? Coming back off the weekend, the second chance efforts, they're picking up the offensive rebounds and you guys are resetting, so they're looking really good so far. Yeah, we just have to keep getting those rebounds offensively and defensively and uh, just keep pressuring them. You know, this is your first year as part of the assistant, as part of the coaching squad. Your thoughts so far? I'm just enjoying it. St. Clair, the program has been really good. Um, just because I haven't been playing anymore because of injuries and still to be involved with the game, it's just... Uh, great time and I'm happy to be part of the St. Clair program here. That's right it goes a long way. Um, what are some of the keys for the second half? We just have to stay focused, limit our turnovers, um, keep taking the good open shots and um, keep pressuring them. All the best to you in the second half. Thank, Thank you, you Amanda. Much. That's Amanda Milanis, the assistant coach for the St. Clair Saints where they are leading by 13, 37-24 at the half. When we return, I'll have Royal Church join me and we'll break down the stats for the first half. You're watching Saints basketball on WE TV. Hi everybody, this is Tina Brigley, host of In and Out of Your Mind with Tina Brigley on WE TV. Join me and my guests while we explore ways to get out of your mind and into your life. Join us each and every week for a new show. Come see me here on WeTV. Did you know that the most severe injuries in our region are motor vehicle crashes? 65% of road fatalities last year were directly the result of distracted driving. 90% of injuries arriving in our emergency rooms are preventable. Our message to you this summer is put down the phone. Just drive. Let's work together to keep our trauma stretchers empty. I learn by doing. I learn by um, reacting to a situation. St. Clair puts me directly into my industry. I'm dealing with real patients, real life situations. It's not just theory. It's not book work anymore. I choose to take control of my future. In my path is Cypher College. I choose to be here. All right, Royal Church joins me as we continue the halftime show here on WE TV. Saints up 13, 37 to 24. Uh, Royal, your thoughts on the Saints so far? Because I see on the offensive end, they're doing much better in terms of second chance opportunities, but they really got to tighten up on those shootings. Yeah, Aaron, they. Uh as you could see and all the fans watching on WE TV could see, their shooting in the first quarter was pretty bad. They couldn't make a shot. And you mentioned to me earlier that they never tried to get the ball inside at all, uh, except when they were dribbled to the rim from the perimeter. But they never passed the ball into the post at all, which is, which is difficult to play that way because you're not getting anything from the inside. All your points are coming from the outside makes it easier for the defense to defend you. Um, uh, they shot a lot better. 
about uh, a third of the way through the second quarter. Their shots started to go in. Janet Kucera had a great half. She had 13 points, uh, a lot of steals. But I think the key to the first half, Aaron, is the uh, St. Clair press. When they put pressure on Redeemer, Redeemer turned the ball over time and time again, which created layups and easy chances for the Saints. In addition to the defensive effort, an honorable mentor goes out to Nora Bazzi. There was one play right near from the sideline where it was a cross-court pass, and she almost stripped it away, but it went out of bounds. But once again, Nora Bazzi, she's getting much more minutes than she had last week against the Sheridan Bruins, and mostly it's because of her defensive effort. Yeah, and she only had three minutes uh, in uh, against the Sheridan Bruins in Branton last weekend, and probably should have had more, but she's getting minutes now. Uh, you can see, and all the folks can see, what a great athlete she is. And she's quick, and she gets to the ball. The, the full court press is perfect for a player like that because uh, she reacts quickly. She's got great instincts, and she makes that press. She's one of the people that makes that press work for the Saints. Um, in addition, I'd like to mention, Aaron, that uh, uh, Toby Brinkman, absolutely destroyed the Saints in the first part of the game. Nobody fronted her. No one denied her. They let her get the ball in the post. You can't let big players with some skill get the ball in the post. They'll kill you. And she did. She got offensive rebounds. However, they adjusted. And in the uh, last five or six minutes, they held her to, to, to nothing, basically. Keep in mind, for most of the time, Andy Kiss had an all-guard lineup, too. So you got to expect those type of mismatches from Toby Brinkman. But it's good that you have those types of adjustments. Speaking of adjustments, the Redeemer Royals have to take care of Michaela Blackburn, who went down just a few minutes before the second half. If she is out for the majority of the second half, what do the Redeemer Royals have to do to fill in her shoes? Well, unfortunately, Aaron, I don't think they can. They have no depth. They have five players who start the game. Uh, two of who are exceptional, and uh, the other three are pretty decent. But after that, they can't go to the bench, so losing a starter for them is a disaster. They're going to have to try two or three different players and see who adapts and who can hold their own in the second half. But if the Saints continue to press with the aggressiveness and energy that they are, that's going to have an effect on Redeemer. And there's one more thing, Aaron, uh, I noticed that the best player for Redeemer, uh, Julia Pavlik, number 12, who's their high score, averaging 20 a game, has one point. Yeah, she's so, been shut down. Absolutely. The perimeter players for the Saints are doing a dynamite job in keeping her on the perimeter, forcing her to shoot contested jump shots, and she has only shot about three, and she ha hasn't made them. She just has one free throw. So if you can keep their high score... To one point and a half, you're going to be in pretty good shape. We saw Shannon Kennedy in the crowd earlier in the second quarter. I mean, a Saints alumni, a lot of people know about her. A player like that, does that bring a lot of uh, confidence and spirit into the St. Clair Saints squad? No, this is their first game of the home season, and when you have somebody, a veteran like her, come in and see these girls? Yeah, I think having someone like Shannon continue to be loyal to the Saints basketball program and show up here to support her teammates uh, is a special thing. and But that's the kind of person Shannon Kennedy is. Loyal, dedicated, hardworking, caring. She's all the wonderful traits that you want in a person and an athlete. And uh, the Saints can't, can't replace Shannon Kennedy. It's impossible. But uh, uh, kudos to a couple of the players who are trying to fill in for her and get some scoring. Uh, Jamie Chauvin's contributing today. She scored, I think, six points. And if, if Jamie Chauvin can step up, Marissa Mara made a couple of baskets. That's fantastic. Once newer, newer Bazzi gets more comfortable, you can see how great an athlete she is and what a nice player she is. She'll start to score. And then when you get six or seven people contributing to the offense, Aaron, then it becomes special. So... The Saints have a ways to go, but they're starting to show their potential today. 
All right, and that covers it for the halftime show. Once again, at the half, the Saints 37, the Royals 24, and we'll have the second half with JP and I on the call when we return here to the St. Clair College Sportsplex in just a moment. You're watching Saints women's basketball on WeTV. We is the premier video streaming production company in southwestern Ontario. We are We Digital. We are busy. I mean, really busy. We Digital is now recruiting hardworking, creative team players to try out for our team. Camera operators, audio specialists, web and social media geeks, hosts, media students, and some that just want to learn the ropes. Send us a resume, a demo reel with your best work, along with a cover letter that will snag an interview with our producers. Streaming is the future. Come and be part of what's next. Windsor started a tradition way back of giving us great barbecue north of the border, and you can taste that tradition when you come to Tommy's Barbecue. Dive into Tommy's rotisserie style ribs and chicken, along with the crinkle cut fries, coleslaw, and the original hot and sweet sauces. Plus all those amazing desserts like black forest cake and strawberry cheesecake. Taste the tradition and so much more at Tommy's Barbecue, 999 Erie Street East. See you there, Windsor. The job market has changed and I have to adapt. I'm not just getting theory, I'm getting skills. A degree isn't necessarily a pathway to their career. Being industry ready is. I choose to take control of my future and my path is St. Clair College. I choose to be here. Everybody, this is Tina Brigley, host of In and Out of Your Mind with Tina Brigley on WeTV. Join me and my guests while we explore ways to get out of your mind and into your life. Join us each and every week for a new show. Come see me here on WeTV. Did you know that the most severe injuries in our region are motor vehicle crashes? 65% of road fatalities last year were directly the result of distracted driving. 90% of injuries arriving in our emergency rooms are preventable. Our message to you this summer is put down the phone, just drive. Let's work together to keep our trauma stretchers empty. I learn by doing. I learn by um, reacting to a situation. St. Clair puts me directly into my industry. I'm dealing with real patients, real life situations. It's not just theory. It's not book work anymore. I choose to take control of my future and my path to St. Clair College. I choose to be here. Welcome back, everyone, to the St. Clair College Sportsplex in Windsor, Ontario, for more coverage of the OCAA women's basketball circuit as the St. Clair Saints lead 37 to 24. Justin Prince alongside Aaron Stan Sanders with just a few moments before the start of the third quarter. And we have seen what has been a doozy of a game so far. Not a lot of strong field goals, but a lot of turnovers leading to points for the Saints. Well, for the Saints, that's what you want. You want to promote the, you want to get those turnovers so you can get a good transition game. They have been doing that so far. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, what Royal and I have been talking about was mm -hmm. the second chance opportunities. Yeah. I also brought that up to Amanda Malenas, the assistant mm -hmm. coach, and that's one thing you really want to pick up from that because, again, they were lacking that last week against Sheridan, and I'm glad to see they made a couple of adjustments to make sure they get those stats up and going. But you got to give a credit to a couple mm -hmm. of players, too, that really struck it rich mm -hmm. so far. Yana Cusera is leading the team with 10 points, no, no doubt and no question about that. In addition, Andy Kiss said he wants players to step up. They needed players to step up, and if you could tell from the points and stats department, we got a lot of players stepping up too. 
17 total points off the bench for St. Clair. Just five for Redeemer for comparison's sake in this 13-point game. Lots of fans coming out for the home opener for the women and men's basketball teams here in Windsor, Ontario, who have seen the Saints have a very strong start to their home schedule after starting off the season 0-1 on October 20th against Sheridan. A lot of improvements since then we've seen at times throughout tonight, as now St. Clair will have the first possession of the third quarter. One main key here is to get more high-quality shots. They only shot 34% from the field. Quick three by Olichny. And Olichny no good on the triple as Redeemer gets the rebound. It will be brought up by Mike. Michaela Blackburn. Good to see her on the court after that quick moment of injury. And Blackburn misses the layup inside. St. Clair will push the tempo. Stops on the outside perimeter. Shot by Tompkins, no good. Rebounded this time by Pavlik. Pavlik a very quiet first half as you guys discussed during the halftime show. Just one total point. This one goes to no man's land on the pass, intercepted by the Saints. Point up for the jump shot. It's good. Yana and, Kuchera. And you know it's no man's land when one of the Caceres get a shot down, especially from the transition. So they're really capitalizing on that. Full court pressure. Full court pressure. And draws the whistle as it'll be a push. It will be staying for Redeemer. For Kuchera, 12 total points led the way in scoring for the Saints. For Logan Kuchera, her sister, five total points, along with four rebounds, five assists, four steals. That was a good, well, first off, that's a good foul by Logan Cassera. You got double teamed, you're trying to swipe it away because last thing you want is a good pass down low to finish the deal done. Quick steal. Whoa. And that was Logan Cassera again. This time, taps it out of bounds. And she's been very active trying to get the steals. That is the most by far for any player on the Saints tonight so far. The second most. Anna Ulichny with two. Up, Redeemer will inbound it from the side. Finds Blackburn. Blackburn pulls up for three. It's gone. Oh, oh. A nice little step back there. And nice uh, confidence booster right there, considering what she went through in, like about 20 minutes ago. Good spot up three. And that's her first made bucket of the night so far. 0 for 1 in the first half. As the jump shot's no good on the outside for the Saints. Tapped out of bounds. Saints possession. That will reset the shot clock to a fresh 14. And once, again, and once again, for everybody tuning in, when you get the offensive rebound, the shot clock resets the 14 instead of the full 24. Thank you very much for noting that, of course, with FIBA rules, of course. NBA transitioning to that in this season as well. As whistle called on a push. And it looks like that's going to stay Saints' possession. If I'm looking at this right here, at least bring them to the line. Pardon me. I'm going to see. Uh, I'm going to need to see a replay of that because it was just like going through a tornado. And Logan Kuchera is the one who goes to the line either way and drains the first free throw. That's another thing to discuss. Not a single free throw attempt in the second quarter for Saint Clair. It doesn't mean it's good or bad, JP. It's just a matter of them trying to capitalize on those close range shots because you've seen them, they shot more in the mid range and from beyond the arc in that quarter alone. Absolutely so far is this one stripped away by Tompkins. Three on three opportunity. Going to the mid range to Tompkins. Outside, she's got it for three. That's a good decision because Anna Olichny was already covered so you go to your other option up top. Make that five triples for the Saints. So far in this one, just past two minutes into the third quarter as Redeemer tries to answer back no good. Second chance, fresh 14 for Martin. Pass to on outside, Bowman pulls up, air ball. Second chance rebounded by Pavlik. Down to five on the shot clock. Trying to reach it inside is Bowman as that will reset the clock to 14 at least. Now, Anna Olichny had her back turned, which is one of the reasons why Redeemer had that second chance opportunity as we look at it again. Wide open was Larissa Bowman. And just airballed the shot, but a great rebound by Pavlik to set up the second chance, draw the whistle, set up the pass to draw the whistle route back to Bowman. And now Bowman's to the line to shoot too. Redeemer struggled in the first half of the free throw line, 40%, just a total of four of 10. That one makes it 44-28. Second free throw is good. Brings the lead down to 15. Five, five 
St. Clair Saints have the momentum here in their home opener here on Wheat TV. Justin Prince alongside Aaron Sanders. Royal Church, Joseph Munner covers tonight the rest of our great crew here from the St. Clair College Sportsplex. Yolichny sees the shot go up, misses, rebounded inside. Here comes Pavlik. Pavlik tries to deke around. Shifts to the left. Draws the whistle. And it's going to be in down and down the baseline. It looks like Pavlik drawing the whistle down low as Bazzi is going to come back into the game now for St. Clair. And with Nor Bazzi, she had a great impact in that first half. And of course, someone with a lot of impact as you look at some of the players setting up for this possession for Redeemer. Once this again, the guard formation for the Saints. Quick steal. Another steal, this time Logan Kushera again, steal number five. Outside, Yana Kushera off the front rim. Draws the jump ball. And it's gonna, and they're pointing towards the Redeemer side as the possession arrows that way. That's right, they had the possession. And good tug of war right there between Kushera and Jamie Chauvin. About three minutes into the third quarter now, as Pavlik goes into the St. Clair bench, stolen away by St. Clair. Bazzi keeps it inside. This one goes back into the Royals' hands. Up the floor, Pavlik spins off a defender, pushes the tempo. Up the floor, Morden draws the whistle. She'll go to the line to shoot two. That was a quagmire of a play starting from the Saints' offensive end as we're going to have another look at it. So you can see there just a little bit of a shove from Pavlik, but she was able to create space, get the cross-court pass right down. Nor Bazzi had no choice but to try to put her hands in the cookie jar, and she got pinned with a foul. And that puts the Redeemer just one foul away from going to the bonus. Four fouls already from the Saints, not even halfway to the third quarter. As the first free throw was good, second free throw up is good. They're four for four from the stripe in the third quarter. To the, coming into the game now, Marissa Mara coming in. Coming out is Anna Yulichny for the Saints. A lot of substitutions today from Coach Andy Kiss, the six-year veteran for St. Clair, one of the top coaches in the OCAA. Yana Kushera cuts inside, misses the layup. Try to tap it out there as players fall over. Redeemer goes on the press. Blackburn, wide open down low. Martin tapped away. They'll keep possession as that one's tapped out of bounds by Mara. Not a good defensive decision by the Saints. They stayed frozen up on the left side, which prompted to that good pass down low. Inbounded back inside. Shot from the outside. Goes off the screws of the basket. No good. Saints will bring up the tempo. Outside Mara. Tabazi. 4-3. She's got it. Do you think she was comfortable getting that shot down? I think so. You best believe. And Bazzi able to drain the triple, had a triple in her first game in the OCAA, was one for one in the first game. Has another bucket for this one, driving inside, Redeemer draws the bucket. Going to the line to shoot two, once again, Toby Brinkman. And you'll see the reason on the screen. I give kudos to the Saints for the aggression down low, but now with them, in the penalty situation, they really got to stay lax until somebody gets a shot going as Brinkman knocks the first one down. And Brinkman was the top offensive option for Redeemer for much of the first half. 10 points, now brings it up a little bit more with the free throws to 12 points and a 14-point deficit for Redeemer. A very strong first half from her. Meanwhile, Saints trying to respond with a bucket. Pass down low, tapped out of bounds by Brinkman. Saints keep possession. You can see Nor Bazzi, she had the eagle eye from up top trying to swing it down to the basket, but luckily for them, Redeemer tapped it out of bounds. Now they have 11 seconds to deal with. Nor Bazzi will be the one inbounding along the, the baseline. Nearly stolen away. Back to Bazzi <laughs> for three. No good. Here comes Pavlik. Double teamed as whistles drawn on the floor. And it's going to be credited the foul to Logan Cuchero this time for the reach. Now, let me tell you about that last play, JP. What I admire the most is when you have an inbounds play from out of bounds, a lot of people seem to lose attention of the inbounder. Once they get the pass, they lose all attention. They switch the man-to-man -man except for that person. 
Nor Bazzi was able to pop out. There was no attention to her. She should have got the easy shot, mm -hmm. but rest assured, that was one of the finest plays you'll ever see from out of bounds. And with the free throws now with Redeemer in the bonus, that brings it to a 12-point deficit for the Royals. About halfway through the third quarter here on Wii TV. Mara, pass to Juan, trying to cut inside. Logan Kuchera, now to Bazzi. Outside, Yana Kuchera for three, Hello. she's got it. Yana Kuchera's unconscious tonight. Makes another triple for her totals. And now it's up to a 15 point lead as Blackburn misses the shot on the outside. Back to Blackburn. Bounced around Martin. Now Brinkman. Try to pass it in. Stolen away. Bossy one handed pass. Able to find Yana Kuchera for the there transition you go. bucket. There you go. You see the prowess in Norbazi's defense. She tapped the ball around, looked up, and was able to get the assist from that. Another great play on transition, transition set up by another steal by the Saints. For three, outside, Pavlik no good. Rebounded once again by the Saints. Bossy finds Yana Kuchera. Able to find Logan. Passed around back to Yana. Yana again for three. This time no good. Rebounded by Pavlik. Stripped away. Redeemer keeps possession in the corner. As substitutions coming in, multiple players coming in. And getting to Pavlik, she's had a quiet night so far. But it's been one of the impact players we talked about a little bit for Redeemer for this season. Consider a possible impact player for them this season. Well, JP, I mean, considering if you average a double-double per game, what are your opponents going to be thinking about you? That you're a most incredible asset to the team. And considering how many years she played for university and did not mm -hmm. get as much stats and minutes as she anticipated, mm -hmm. she's really striking it rich. But like you said, in this game, it's a different story. And right now, Redeemer going with the half-court set. Blackburn outside Pavlik for the three. Oh. And the buzzer got it. And Pavlik, who had an ice-cold first half, able to get on the board for the second half. That's her first bucket of the second half, up to four points total. Outside in response, Zelina no good. Zelina fights for the rebound as that draws the whistle. One of the gripes for the Saints is their ability to shoot at will from beyond the arc. They don't need that right now because, again, they're going to be at a mismatch when it comes to boxing out, and that's one of the reasons why mm -hmm. their statistics and their percentage is going at a downfall right now. And the foul went against the Saints, and that brings Redeemer back to the line. This time it is Brinkman to the line to shoot two. Did not have a single free throw in the first half. Able to drain the first free throw to bring it back to 13. 3.27 to go in this third quarter as Redeemer has really gotten much more comfortable at the free throw line. Not a single miss in this third quarter. Well, they're going to have no choice but to because, again, free throws are the most important part. How are they getting there? They're drawing contact right down low. Fur. Drawing the contact down low is Haley Fur, and she'll go to the line in response. Foul against Julia Pavlik. As now, you'll see the reason on the replay. Okay, Alichny with a quick pass to Fur. Quick pump fake, and she drives right down. Yeah, made the contact. It looks like maybe on the wrist. She makes the first free throw, Haley Fur. Now her first year eligible player for this Saints squad for this season. As she makes the second free, two free throws. One rebound and assist in seven minutes in the first game of the season on the 20th against Sheridan. And now you could credit her with five points to date. No correction, two points. Her first two points in the OCAA. Congratulations to Haley Fur for your first two points in the LCAA at the strike. Meanwhile, no no whistle on that play as that one's no good. Yana Kushera passed outside to Mara. No good. Mara, second chance, knocked out of bounds. It's going to stay St. Clair ball with 15 on the shot clock still. You best believe you're going to have a second chance opportunity when you follow your shots, and that's what Mara did right there. Popped right out from the wing got the rebound, and was able to take care of business by getting the inbounds back for the Saints. They have officially reset the clock to 14 with the offensive rebound credited, as the three is no good. Rebounded by Brinkman. Under three minutes to go in the third quarter. Multiple players trying to set up in the post. Brinkman battles 
hard with Yana Kuchera as that will be a jump ball. As that will end up being a whistle and brains the other way. Now you can see there Jana Kushera and being involved with the tie up with Brinkman. And considering how many turnovers Redeemer has been producing lately, I don't blame her for going after the ball. 14 point lead for the Saints still as the three is no good. That'll be tapped out of bounds. Stay St. Clair ball as it went off Redeemer. I think it went off Pavlik. It sure looked like it, but once again, I, I, I'm at an amazement at that call right there, JP. It plinkoed right on top of the backboard, and usually if the shot hits the backboard, it's out of bounds. And Yana Kushera usually been hitting a lot of threes tonight, misses that triple. Second chance. Oh, my. Huge hustle play that time by Yulichny to keep that possession alive. Six on the shot clock. Yana pulls up. Mid-range, no good. Rebounded for a third chance. Mara cuts back in outside. Yulichny finds Mara. Six on the shot clock. Layup inside, no good. Martin gets the rebound and breaks up the three chances from the Saints. Martin bobbles it, misses the chance, second chance, Brinkman. And now that will bring her to the line to shoot for two. Foul going against Kirsten Zelina. So the only thing stopping the Saints defense is their approach to the basket. Too much hands in the cookie jar, especially on the transition break. Coming out of the game, Zelina uh, coming out of the game right now, pardon me, along with Mara for substitutions. And you got to start factoring possible foul trouble because multiple players are starting to get to three fouls for the Saints. Yeah, and you don't want to go to the situation where you have all your players branch out from the mid-range because that's going to open up the opportunities for Redeemer like it has been with Brinkman throughout this game. Chauvin, one of the players coming in. Yolichny stays in, makes the bucket, go. Up to 56, 42 is the Saints. Under 90 seconds to go in the third. Trying to go back to the high post. Brinkman. Brinkman mismatch. Tapped away. Yana Kuchero with the steal. 101. Yowichny with the trailer. Misses. Tapped out of bounds. It's Redeemer ball. Goes off that time. Yowichny. They corrected their decision. It's going to be Saints ball. It was originally called down the sideline to go towards Redeemer. You've seen the correction there down the baseline to keep it. Saints ball. Good catch on you. Once again, you got to watch out for the inbounds passer. Don't let her get away. Fur inbounds it. Yannick Kuchera for three. Ay, ay, ay. Draws the whistle right after the shot, and it looks like it might be on Larissa Bowman. And now they're discussing it's going to be two or three. Oh, she was way beyond the arc, so it has to be three. And now they're going to say, I believe they said side in. Yeah, it was after the shot, so no shooting foul there. They have officially corrected that to the scores table here, 56-42, under a minute to go in the third. As now they have officially reset the clock as well to a minute and six seconds. Fur will be the inbounder. Chauvin sets the screen. Yolichny has another screen from Logan Kushera. Finds Yana Kushera. Down to seven on the shot clock. Outside, Yolichny for three. Off the back rim, second chance, kept alive to Fur. Fur gets the mid-range to go. She finally got a shot to go after two missed attempts. She found her opening. It was all because of the offensive rebound, which has been taking care of business for the Saints. And the Saints defense sleeping there. Missed shot, though, on the outside from Webb as that ball is tapped around. Going to the floor there, Brinkman trying to die for that play. You'll see where that started off with Fur with a nice mid-range jump shot. And it was contested too there, JP. I mean, what do you expect? You can't hold the ball for a long time. It's either you shoot or you just drive. Webb is going inbounded from the baseline. Goes to the corner to Martin. Finds Brinkman. Ten on the shot clock. And another whistle. Redeemer goes back to the line again to shoot two. Well, the way I see it, that's one of the 
only ways the Redeemer Royals are going to score if they go off to the line. That's not a positive when it comes to the Saints side because when you're in the penalty and when you foul more, like you mentioned, JP, you're going to have a lot of people in foul trouble. Therefore, you're going to have to make tons of substitutions because who knows, this game isn't out of the woods yet. you got 10 more minutes of basketball to go down to, so you really need to have your players realize that you can't foul as much, but you got to keep in mind you can't let down, let up on the competition. And that's the first missed free throw of the second half from Redeemer there, that time by Brinkman. Brinkman now with 17. Meanwhile, response from St. Clair, it's good. Yulichny with the bucket. How about that for a quick response to bring it back to 18 for St. Clair. Shot clock is off with 15 seconds to go. Martin knocked around, draws the whistle. And Fur, I believe, might have got the reach on the wrist. That'll bring another trip to the line for Redeemer. Yeah, that's only Fur's first foul of the game. She has four points right now, but once again, that entry pass, Fur tried to <laughs> try to outnumber uh, Katrina Martin right there. And Martin to the line. One more free throw out to miss, and the Fur still an 18-point deficit for the Royals. Second one is good, 61-44. Saints will have possibly the last shot of the third quarter. Yelechny, pass to Long. Got a Kushera for three. Off the side of the rim, battle for the rebound, and that will end your third quarter. The St. Clair Saints lead 61-44 to after three quarters of play. We'll have to see how Redeemer responds and if the Saints can keep up the pressure. For the next few minutes, you're watching Wii TV here from the St. Clair College Sportsplex. Hi, I'm Josie, and I'm your co-host of the Wii Digital production, We Now. Anyone interested in promoting a business, an event, a book signing, or maybe even just making aware of the movers and shakers of Windsor Essex County, We Now can do that for you. We'll get your word out. So make sure you email me at josie at we-tv.ca to book an in-studio session that will air live on Facebook. And don't forget to check out our social media. We've got Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and YouTube. We are resilient. Often knocked down, but never backing down. You can spend your whole life on the outside looking in, or you can live it on the inside. Because that's where your passion lives. The drive to push beyond the naysayers, to find the fire that ignites your toughness. Because the truth is, winning always comes when you start from within. Welcome back, everyone, to the St. Croix College Sportsplex for the start of the fourth quarter, as it is the home opener for basketball here in Windsor, Ontario for the 2018-19 season. Justin Prince alongside Aaron Sanders. And right now, Coach Andy Kiss, you can see him discussing things with his players up 61 to 44, but still a lot can happen in the stretch of 10 minutes. Yeah, a lot could happen, and you can see the Redeemer Royals are finding their way to get back. How are they getting back? Because they're taking multiple trips to the free throw line, and the Saints are being a little too aggressive, ag mm -hmm. aggression down in the post. So they really got to control those fouls. But in addition, the Saints are doing a good job too. And one of the players that is in major foul trouble is Kirsten Tompkins, four fouls for her. Multiple players also have three fouls. Norbazi is among that group for the Saints. And that led to a parade of free throws for the Royals in that third quarter. The fans, they're just hoping that this game stays the way it is. Remember, there is a men's game after this as well for the men's home opener against those two different teams. That will be tip off at approximately 4 p.m. Eastern time. And the one thing to mention, JP, among the crowd, one of the coaches for the Windsor Valiants, Kara Wees, mm -hmm. in the crowd watching most likely Noor Bazzi and Haley Fur as they were mm -hmm. alumnus for the Windsor Valiants. I thought I recognized her in the backdrop, of course, the Valiants. And the Jewel League in general brings a lot of different products and a lot of good players for both the OC OUA and the OCAA as Redeemer has the first play as Martin draws the whistle. Another foul and another trip to the line for Redeemer. So Kirsten Compkins coming back in to start the fourth quarter, JP, but looking up on the scoreboard, whoever has whoever St. Clair has starting right now, we got two players in double digit scoring figures. You got Anu Lichney with eleven. And so far you got Yana Kinsera with fifteen. And in addition to that, Toby Brinkman with seventeen points. She wasn't stopped in the first half, but the Saints are trying to find answers. 
And that basket does not get an answer as that one stopped on the second chance. Third chance, air balls. Fourth chance tapped around. Now Brankman on the fourth chance gets it to go. And how about that fight for second chance points from Redeemer? And at that point, I should have just watched my mouth because once I mentioned Toby Brinkman, she starts sitting in the shooting tear again. Tompkins misses the jump shot. No good on the outside. Up the floor goes Redeemer. On the outside, Bowman. Now Brinkman. Outside Webb. Pass from the inside, back outside. Back to Webb inside. It's stolen away once again. And a whistle drawn on that one, on a push. That's going to be an over a back foul mm -hmm. on Kirsten Tompkins. And if and I'm not mistaken, she's going to be fouled out. That's her fifth total foul. Stays in the game. Three is no good, meanwhile, in response from Pavlik. And another whistle. This one, I believe, it went against Redeemer, so St. Quo will have possession. That foul going against this time, Bowman. Once again, we're seeing a lot of action down low. And Kirsten Tompkins, she has five fouls. Once again, in the OCAA rules, if mm. you have five fouls, you're out for the remainder of the yeah. game. And that's what the officials have officially corrected here, Andy Kiss, knowing that's the reason they're saying she has to come out of the game. Today's officials, Barry Cullen, Don Coatsworth, Doug Heath, have called a pretty fair and balanced game between both sides. Absolutely. Considering how wild the game could be, they, they maintain you know, their cool throughout and plus there are well-known referees they've been doing this for a number of years they know how much aggression is being displayed on all these games Yelichny passes it along Yana Kuchera cuts inside draws the whistle and now she will go to the line Yana Kuchera's had a very strong game today for St. Clair 17.7 in the second half so far and considering her last game only ended up with eight points, three rebounds, three assists, and a steal to boot. She was two for ten from the field. But, of course, a big contrast to what she's been doing this afternoon. And add in the three points, three point opportunities to end the defensive hustle. And there's your And hustle. there's the rebounding hustle coming into play as well. Another rebound for the Cushera sisters. Yana Cushera steps back for three. No good to the left of the basket. Battle for the ball inside, jump ball. Arrows pointed towards Redeemer's side. And a lot of hustle right now, 90 seconds into the fourth quarter. Let's get a little quick replay to tie up with Fur and Brinkman. And now the press is coming up from the Saints. Webb, stolen away down low. Yolichny broke up the pass trying to get to Pavlik. Yana Kashera, now outside. Chauvin pulls up, no good. Air ball, 14 on the shot clock. Yulichi gets the jump shot to go on the second chance. Yeah, you're not going to have enough time to breathe when you have second chance opportunities like that. And the St. Clair Saints, once again, are taking advantage of that. And Andy Kiss is telling them, keep up the pressure. It's stolen away again. Chauvin this time, second chance, no good. Third chance down Young. Yulichi, four straight points. And remember, and remember, we said in the first quarter, nobody was able to answer on Redeemer's shots down low. And uh, Redeemer, they're now getting the taste of their own medicine. Brinkman. Brinkman wide open, breaks the press, gets the two. So, JP, if I mention Brinkman's name again, if she scores, could you tape my mouth? Unbelievable. Meanwhile, for three, Yolichny no good. Rebounded this time by Brinkman. Pavlik to Bowman. She slows things down as Pavlik passes it along to Webb. Outside for three, she's got it. It's a 14 point game. That's the type of three she's been looking for all day and she was able to get herself set up at that position. She knocks it down. Already a few players getting set to come in for the Saints alongside the bench. Multiple substitutions and adjustments from Andy Kiss today. Passed along the perimeter. Yulichny again for three, this time off the front rim. And Brinkman continues to add to her rebound totals with another one in the inside. Well, will bring it up the floor. Approaching four minutes into the fourth quarter as Brinkman outside. Finds the woman outside, no good. Rebounded once again by the Saints. Yana Kashera, pass down low, able to find Logan for the bucket. That's basically their bread and butter. 
and also the bread and butter. The man-to-man -man coverage press. Keeping it up here. Royals break it. Second chance, though, no good. Third chance, no good. Brinkman blocked in the first attempt, misses the second. Yana Cachero finds Logan. Logan, four straight points for her now. And at this point, the Saints are trying to add insurance points, up 18 points. It's the Cacera connection right now. Right now, a very strong game from the Cacera's right now. The play's no good down low for Martin. Now Yana Cachera adds another rebound. She stops on the outside. Oh my. Bounce Logan again as she'll go to the line to shoot two. And this foul is going to go against Bowman. You can see the replay up on your screen from the play there. Once again, I find it hard to believe why the Royals haven't found any answers to stop the Cacera connection between Jana and Logan because they've been care taking care of business. They scored the team's last mm -hmm. eight points, if I'm not mistaken, JP. The transition game, those second chance opportunities, and those defensive boards is what's killing the Royals right now. Logan Cucera now to the line to shoot two, makes the first. Coming out of the game of the substitutions was Jamie Chauvin coming in, Nor Bozzi. Also an air player being brought on. Kalud Ahmad now getting ready to come in for the Saints. Yeah, Kalud Ahmad, this is her second year in the OCAA, JP. And in addition to that, you know, she's a very, very underrated defender when you look at it, a very well-known figure in the high school business in Windsor, Ontario. So once again, a pack of defenders. Haley Fur was also brought out of the game. Marissa Mara Ooh. brought in, stolen away again. Here comes Mara. Finds Jana Kuchera back to Mara, knocked out of bounds by Blackburn. He'll stay Saints possession with 524 to go in the fourth. Marissa Mara just snatched that down. Once again, these cross-court passes aren't working in the Royals' way. They got to find some way to get a, at least a dribble handoff and get close to the basket. Bozzi for three, air ball no good, just towards the right for that shot. Saints still lead by 20. Well, once again, you can't let up, because once again, a lot could happen in the five minutes and change here. Redeemer's got to find some answers, swing it down low. Andy Kiss already telling them to go for a half-court defensive set. Re reaching in, Ahmad, and that draws the whistle. Just the second foul of the fourth quarter for the Saints. Three total for the Royals in comparison. That's very much different compared to the third. Mm -hmm. Inbounded alongside. Pavlik able to find that time Webb. Back Brinkman. Brinkman cuts in. Pass outside. Tapped around. Kept in possession. Wide open down low. Finds Brinkman. Good recovery from the Royals from that broken play. And that's 19 points now for Toby Brinkman. Yolichny tries to respond with the mid-range, no good. Ahmad fights for the rebound, falls to the floor. Redeemer has the possession. Pavlik spins around at the top of the key. Back to Brinkman. Pass out back to Blackburn. Cut back inside. Now finding Lucy Brinkman. Lucy Brinkman stripped. Yulichny gets the steal. Bazzi, quick pass, stolen away by Toby Brinkman. Pavlik will bring it up the floor. Tries to go over, defender on the layup, misses. Taps it out, second chance. Four minutes to go in the fourth as the pass goes nowhere. Finds y Yana Kuch Kuchera. Yana Kuchera misses the bucket. Rebounded by Lucy Brinkman. Here comes the pressure. Toby Brinkman inside. She's got 21 on the layup. And timeout called by St. Clair. Yeah, no doubt Andy Kiss wants to slow things down because after that possession, a lot of players. Let's take a look at the live stats as they go here in the fourth quarter. Both teams shooting about 33, 34%. But look at the three point totals. 41 attempts from three, 10 triples from the Saints. Also add in the 17 steals, Aaron. Well, that's the difference maker right there. But I did mention before, the Saints really need to consider not shooting from long range or else you're going to have dismissal performance like this. But the steals, mm -hmm. you take care of those cross-court opportunities, that's going to equal up for the long range games. But again, the Royals, 
Do you believe how many times they went to the free throw line? Mm -hmm. It's because the Saints, they told them, it's like, hey, we're going to intimidate you, but at the same time, they cannot keep their hands away from them. 28 free throws so far for them compared to 14. That's half. And plus seven in made free throws as well, shooting 68% on the game, 19 to 28. And still down 72 to 56. Also looking at the rebounds, those are dead even just about. Those plus are one for the Royals. Those are very close, but the majority of those rebounds for St. Clair is from offensive boards. And uh -huh. we mentioned time and time again about those second chance opportunities. But the Royals, to their credit, they're really picking up on the transition game. And so the DBs are going to surely show it. But when it comes down to it, it might come down to the game of rebounds. It might, but might. then again, there's still a ways to go, about under four minutes to go. 72-56, double-digit lead for the Saints. Yelichny, pass the ball now to Logan Kuchera. Kuchera and Tayana, pass down low. Yelichny gets it to go. That was a pretty risky pass, but they found it anyhow. She's got 17 points now, a lot of those coming in the fourth. Meanwhile, Lucy Brinkman passed out. Missing the three that time is Pavlik. And the Saints will go up the floor once again. Try and bring it to a 20 point lead. Kaylee Chauvin coming in on the last time out, misses the bucket. Redeemer with three minutes to go in the fourth. Trail by 18 to the hometown St. Clair Saints. Outside, Blackburn just rims out. Yana Kushera will bring it up the floor. Passed outside, Tamara. No good on the three. Tapped out of bounds. Signal towards the Saints possession still is coming in substitution. Coming out, Lucy Brinkman. Coming back in is Katrina Martin. That leaves 2.44 to go in a fresh 14 for the Saints. Yelechny passed in. Logan Kuchera goes for the hook shot. Gets the kiss of the glass to go. And Logan Kuchera combined with Yana, total of 30 total points oh from them. My. And there's a huge block from Logan. It's a block party, everyone's invited. Let's run the tape back. You see it there first with Logan. Celebrating after the bucket, quick transition, cutting in Blackburn. <laughs> she sends it out of there towards the padding, says, I'm not gonna allow this layup. As now the second chance turns into a third chance, meanwhile. Pavlik will reset with eight on the shot clock. Down low, Brinkman. Brinkman, no good, gets the rebound, draws the whistle. And that would be the third foul of the quarter for the Saints. As they're still trying to discuss if it's going to be free throws or if they're going to inbound on the baseline, signal officially now towards the baseline. Mm -hmm. And now Andy Kiss is starting to clear his bench. Tyler Carroll is now getting ready to come into the game. And Tyler Carroll, this is a first year player from Toronto, Ontario. She's taken a fitness health promotion course at St. Clair. She graduated from North Tor Toronto Collegiate Institute and we'll have a lot more about her later. And bounded in by the Royals. Back to the little post, stripped again. Yolichny leading it down as she cannot get the pass out of bounds. Royals ball with two await to go. I want to get back to Tyler Carroll. Most of her life, she played soccer and rugby, so she's a little bit noted to the basketball thing. She's been doing it for a few years. In addition, she collected a few accolades, so she's finally getting her time in the sun. Scramble for the ball. Carroll tries to draw the jump ball, and that's going to give it back to St. Clair. And a smart jump ball decision there from a couple different Saints. Mm-hmm. Well, that's been the name of the game this afternoon, JP. Defense, defense, defense. That's one of the main reasons why they've been able to get easy shots, and they're one of the main reasons why they've been outwitting Redeemer in terms of rebounds. Logan Kusera gets the pass meanwhile. Out to Mara. Mara, outside, jump shot. No good. Tapped out, of, out by Carroll, rebounded by the Royals. Pavlik will bring it back up the floor. Tries to go for the floater, gets it. So Pavlik gets the Euro and the bucket to go, and now we're going to have substitutions. Now, JP, yeah. we're under the two-minute situation. We're going to inform the folks here that mm -hmm. when there's two minutes left, after a made shot, you could substitute at any time as we look at that last basket. Quick timeout here. 
Yeah, both teams deciding to discuss things here with the timeout called on the floor. It's a full one minute timeout with a 76-58 lead. As now reminder, at approximately 4.10 p.m. Eastern time, the men's teams will take the floor as the St. Clair College Saints will have their home opener for the men's team against the Redeemer Royals. Once again, approximately 4.10 p.m. Eastern time on Wii TV. And that one should also be a doozy of a game. St. Clair still looking for their first win. Of course, afterwards, the next game at home for Saints will be against the Costoga Condors. Costoga will have be coming into town. That will be starting at approximately 2 p.m. Eastern time on Wii TV. And you can see Coach Kiss discussing things here in the final few moments, still up by 18. Is still having a lot of strong performances tonight, especially tonight from the Kusera sisters. Yana and Logan combining for a total of 30 points and multiple rebounds, four steals, and that huge block from Logan. Oh, no question about it. And this is what you ex got to expect if you've been watching the Caceres go at it for the last couple of years here on Wii TV. And JP, mm -hmm. Will mentioned that it's got to take a lot more effort from somebody besides the big three, consisting of Jana, Logan, and Ulichny. And so far, we're seeing a couple of players gain their time to sun. Nor Bazzi with their defensive efforts. So that can't go unnoticed at all. Absolutely. A lot of players stepping up today. And in the second game of the season for the Saints. Jump shot no good, meanwhile, as today Freckleton is getting playing experience. Also on the floor, Raven Williams once again. Ball's tapped out of bounds, and it will stay Redeemer possession, going that time off of Carroll. At right now, Yolichny, one of the main core players still on the floor, along with Haley Fur for St. Clair. This will inbounded down the baseline. Finds Martin. Back to Webb. A minute 10 to go in the fourth. Webb puts up the jump shot, just rims out. Draws the whistle after the shot as she's knocked to the floor as that'll be an inbound down the side. But with Redeemer, they've had some strong performances too, especially tonight from Toby Brinkman. Up to 21 total points, 25 rather, pardon me, on the game, just one total foul, multiple rebounds. And it's all because the Saints couldn't find an answer for her for the majority of the first half, but they really shifted up in the defense, so Brinkman having limited points here in the second half. Meanwhile, Blackburn gets a pick outside for three. Misses badly with three on the shot clock. Under a minute to go in the fourth quarter. Up the floor, Yulichny. She stops, guarded by Webb. Freckleton gets the pick. Freckleton, she's blocked, tapped out of bounds with 10 on the shot clock. 76-58 with 40 seconds to go. And for both of these teams, a lot to take from for their next games on their schedules for sure too. Yeah, the Saints are gonna pick up their first win. Big block by Brinkman. Saints are gonna pick up their first win and, and the Royals are gonna drop to 0-3. Mm -hmm. Once again, it's difficult to see somebody start off like that with an 0-3 record like Royals, considering how much talent they have. That can't go unnoticed, but considering they had the overtime loss against Niagara and the loss against the University of Toronto, Mississauga a few nights ago, and now in addition to this, I agree with you. There's a lot to take in. Yeah, those scores, 83-79 in overtime to Niagara, then you mentioned the last game, 10-point deficit loss. For a team with just eight players on their, in the rotation in total, that is a lot to accomplish for. Webb gets the triple, meanwhile. And that's probably gonna ice it up right here, JP. Saints gonna dribble it up court. Yolechny passes out Fur. Now out to Carroll. Yolechny. Redeemer still trying to force a steal as St. Clair tries to dribble it out. Fur will be the one to dribble things out. The St. Clair Saints will get the first victory of 2018-19, 77-61 over the Redeemer Royals. Good game overall, but the Saints found a way to capitalize defensively and on the second chance opportunities, something that was lacking against Sheridan last week. They fixed their mistakes, and now they pick up their first victory of the year.
Congratulations to the St. Clair Saints. Remember, the men's teams is getting all set to go. Post-game coverage is coming up in just a few moments. Aaron Sanders will be along with Royal Church to discuss things as well as see some of the coaches' reactions and or the player of the game for tonight's matchup. 77 to 61 is your final score for the first win of the season for the St. Clair Saints. We'll be back in just a moment on We TV. Windsor started a tradition way back of giving us great barbecue north of the border and you can taste that tradition when you come to Tommy's Barbecue. Dive into Tommy's rotisserie style ribs and chicken along with the crinkle cut fries, coleslaw and the original hot and sweet sauces. Plus all those amazing desserts like black forest cake and strawberry cheesecake. Taste the tradition and so much more at Tommy's Barbecue, 999 Erie Street East. See you there Windsor. The job market has changed and I have to adapt. I'm not just getting theory, I'm getting skills. A degree isn't necessarily a pathway to their career. Being industry ready is. I choose to take control of my future and my path is St. Clair College. I choose to be here. I'm joined by the player of the game, Otto Lichny. She ends up with 17 points in the victory for the St. Clair Saints, their first win of the season against the Redeemer Royals. Anna, talk about this game, because I know there was a lot of expectations going into this first game, home game of the season. Um, well, we went to Sheridan and didn't get the win that we expected, so we were coming here today hoping to get our first win. Um, we're a young team, and we're definitely one of the smallest teams, so we were just hoping to run them out and use our speed as an advantage. I've seen an all-guard lineup for the majority of the game, but you guys were able to capitalize on the second-chance opportunities, offensive rebounds galore, and all that other stuff. I mean, what was the plan going in to play against this Redeemer Royals team? Redeemer is probably one of the biggest teams in the league, as we know, so our goal was to get those offensive rebounds, and we worked on a lot of rebounding drills all week, so we had to push them out, and that's what what do you think about the rookies? Because they, they shined right out there along with you, too. I mean, I've seen a lot of defensive hustle. So your thoughts on the rookies here? Our rookies are bringing a lot of assets to our team, that's for sure. We have a lot of smart players. We have physical players and good rebounding. And their IQ is really good with a team like us. And they're quite fast, and that's what we use. <laughs> Absolutely. Any adjustments that you would think that the team should make in preparation for their next game? We have to work on our transition D that is really big with us, especially with bigger teams. Um, transition is key with a team like us. We have to get in better help defense, but that will take some time to work on, and I'm sure we can do it. That's right. It's only two games. You guys got a long way to go, but, hey, you picked up your first win, and congratulations to you, Anna. Thank you. Anna Lichley, the player of the game with 17 points to her name as the Saints beat the Redeemer Royals. Hey, stick around. In about 20 minutes or so, we're going to have the men's portion of the doubleheader here. The Royals and the Saints are going to do action. That's going to start like around 4 p.m., so stay tuned for that. For now, this be Aaron Sanders for WeTV, and we'll be back for men's action in a few moments. Stay where you are. <laughs> 